What's going on, everybody? Bobby Files and the man, Eric Sheetsaber. We are going to be talking a little NBA breakdown tonight. Nice to have a good night last night. I won the show, the, what's it called? The, uh, I always forget the name of these tournaments. Single entry. $100 single entry, but I can't remember what the name of it is. Um, won the single entry last night, which was a nice win. Uh, nice, because I haven't, like, I haven't won a tournament in a, it had been like a couple months, and that's a, that's a long time um, for me. So happy to, to get back on it. Hopefully we can keep the momentum going tonight. Interesting uh, slate, not as big as some of the Friday slates we've dealt with in the past, but still plenty of options and places to go. Um, and actually, like maybe uh, I don't know. I think there's a, there's a lot of ways to get off the board today. Sheets, uh, how did you do? And what are your thoughts on today's slate? I did pretty well. I got 27th in the alley oop in the big one on DraftKings. Oh, I didn't good. know that. that's beautiful. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I got 313 points in that one. Um, and I had that same entry in uh, in the rotation, which well, I got like 72nd there. Uh, so that that line of cash like 1500. And then I was actually. Um, uh, not in contention with you, but I could see you from where I was sitting in the, in the single <laughs> entry. Um, and I ended up cashing in there. I, 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 I kind of I cashed in the monster on FanDuel. Nothing big, but uh, overall very profitable day. So I was happy to uh, to nice. sweat it, sweat it your, your, your victory. And also just a shout out to Adam Perry, who also capitalized on your Carmelo play. He got like third. In like the four dollar lottery or something like that. I didn't realize he finished that high. I didn't. I, I hadn't caught up on all the the stuff yet. He was, was like fifteenth, and then on that last oh. three, like Carmelo, we swept by like ten people. Um, awesome. yeah. So he did. So we were all we were sweating for the same the same awesome. people. Adam, congrats, man. I like, I like that guy. He's yeah, definitely. he's uh, he's obviously you know he's a student of the game, and and uh, and uh, we're always happy to to see him uh, see him do well. Um, Excellent. okay. So just a couple of announcements. Um. Uh, well, I should. Well, for, first of all, I'm going to be there live, uh, right through lock today. I have I have a little more time today, so I'm going to be doing that. Um, tomorrow, uh, I'll be able to put stuff up early, and then I'm then I'm uh, going to be gone for the day. Um, in addition to the Breeders' Cup, I'm actually going. You ready for this? I'm going to my first ever MMA. I'm going to the one at Madison Square Garden tomorrow. Oh, you're going to it? Oh, I am wow. going. And you know what the best part about it was? I didn't have to pay for tickets because they're uh -huh. fortune. Somebody, one of the co guy I coached with, uh, got like free tickets from something, so um, he's taking me. So that's even oh. better. Um, so I'm I'm gonna go to that. So I'm not gonna be around tomorrow to update anything past like you know three o'clock or something like that. So you guys are under up, but I will be back obviously uh, Sunday for 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 whatever. The other thing, and I want to talk to you about this offline a little bit. I'm not gonna wanna, I don't want to promise anything, but one of our guys that worked that 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 helps with the site, Evan, my my brother-in-law, he um. He's gonna starting to work on the optimizer um, for us to be able to put our own up on the uh, on our site. I and mean, I have a very primitive one of my own that could currently just deal with two sports and only one lineup. But he's first learning how to code it to so he can put it up on the site. And once he gets that, he thinks that he could continue to extend it to go to the other sports and maybe get a little more robust. So we're gonna, it's going to be a process. So I don't want to promise anything over the next day or two, right? But that's that's something that's in that's in the background being being worked on. Um, so you know we're always we're always looking to to do new things and uh, uh, just uh, let you know what we're up to. Yeah, no, I appreciate uh, you giving it a little uh, download. That's a uh, that's definitely helpful. All right, so you ready to uh, look at the NBA for today? Let me let me share my. Um, yeah, I, I do want to encourage people one more thing while we're doing this. Just just check out that around the industry tool and and uh, something that we you know we're talking about for a little bit. Okay. That, you know, it's a keyword yeah. search. It'll take you exactly to any player, any name of anything. It'll take you to basically most of the DFS world directly to that part of whatever player you're talking about, whatever game you're talking about. And uh, it's really a cool tool that was developed also by Evan um, that I think you guys really would get a kick out of and and. So just just check that out. It's, it's right under the uh, around the industry, and then you can just uh, do a, just a keyword search for whatever you want, and it'll take you to whether it's a run pure, whether it's roto grinders, whether it's us, whatever. It'll, you can find out uh, any you know anything about whatever player game situation you want to talk about, and I think that you guys will find it handy. So wanted to remind you that. With that said, let's get into the slate. Um, I'm not even going to tilt about my my golf things. I'm going to wait till later for that one. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but let's get into the basketball slate, uh, starting with Brooklyn, Detroit. Cheats, what are your initial thoughts on this one? All right. So, uh, so Cade Cunningham, which we all probably played at 100% last night, he uh, had a really good fantasy score. So I just, I really wasn't watching the game. So I just kind of figured that he finally got there and made all his shots and he finally, like, you know, showed what he can do. And the fact of the matter is, is that even with 
freaking 39 fantasy points. He was still only four for 17 from the field. You know, <laughs> I mean, and, and at 4,600, you're going to have to give me some reason to not go hundred percent again today. Um, so that's, that's my, that's my first comment. Uh, the other thing is that um, uh, I actually had a lineup with, with, with Jeremy Grant that did pretty well. Um, but I, I don't know if I could play him at, at 7,400. But for me, I guess I'll just keep on, you know, until he's 7K, I guess I'll just keep on playing KK Cunningham. I guess, I guess, I guess that's the plan. Um, and then on the Brooklyn side, um, nobody seems to be um, popping is such a great play. Harden again at 10 3, but, you know, you saw in his last game, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's trying to, you know, to, to get through. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I want to give him a couple of props, you know. So, so in that last game, I mean, he, he shot some air balls. I mean, he was, but, but he found a way to be very, very useful. You know what I mean? Like he, he got like 10 assists in the quarter. He found the right guys and, and, you know, it helps having, you know, obviously Kevin Durant on the court with you. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, both those guys are going to be low owned Harden and, and, and Durant. Um, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to get to those guys. It's incredibly alarming looking at James Harden's free throw yeah. numbers. Um, this is a guy who you would see, he couldn't go two or three games without having like a 20 free throw attempt game. Like every game, every seemed like every other game was 15, 20 attempts. And he was, I, I don't know what he averaged last year, but I, I think somewhere in the double digits, he's had one game of more than four free throws this whole season. He had 19 in that game, but still, um, this is, that really takes away a ton of just the, the easy production that you look for. Uh, the rebounding numbers have been solid overall. The assist numbers have been solid. The shooting numbers have been poor. If he shoots the ball well and can start, starts getting aggressive going back to the line a little bit more, and, and, and I know that people say, oh, there's not calling fouls. No, but there's like – he's not beating people off the dribble. He's not really creating any problems. So I'm having a harder time getting to him, yeah. even though I think that the, at low ownership, I, I fully expect him to maybe not break a slate but put up a 65 or 70 in one of these days soon. And uh, I think Durant is another is, – is probably the more logical option of the two. Uh, definitely more scoring reliant, a little nervous always with Detroit because the blowout's always in play. But those guys are mildly interesting to me. Um, the guy who I think you can you can play and hope he gets hot, the, unfortunately he just kind of had that game, is Joe Harris. Um, it, it, you know, it feels like Chasey, but it's really, you know, you're just betting on a guy who's going to occasionally make five or six threes in the game. And he's cheap enough, but I don't think you need to go there today. So I, I don't know what to do with the Brooklyn side. I probably don't don't do anything as of right now. Um, and I will absolutely lock Cade Cunningham in on both sides at the moment. I, I don't, she, I said to you, I honestly think he could be 7K. Um, I'd probably still be playing him a huge percentage. That's how big of a gap I see with how far it's off. If you hear anything about minutes limits or anything, it's the only thing I would look out for on a back-to-back. -back. Um, he didn't play the last back-to-back. -back. So don't even be sure that he plays tonight. <laughs> but I'm assuming that he if, if he does, I think we need to play him pretty much in every lineup. Um, all right, so Cunningham is the easy one. I'll start off with the Memphis side of the Memphis-Washington game. Everybody sort of makes sense. Um, I like Steven Adams. I like Jaron Jackson Jr. I like Desmond Bain here. Um, I like all three of those guys. I, do I think that they're phenomenal, absolutely locked plays? Jaron Jackson Jr., I would think is a terrific play, but he, he worries me with the foul trouble he gets into. And and the fact that this team can really play without him, they have many different routes they can sort of go um, with all their sort of versatile wings and, and whatnot. And then they have Adams at the center, so they don't really, you know, necessarily always need to play him the 30 plus minutes. Um, but I do like Darren Jackson. I think I would rate J Jackson ahead of Bain for upside, but I think it's pretty close between them. And then Adams would be my third favorite. I think Anthony Melton is in play and somehow getting a little bit overlooked because of a couple of down games but we know this guy's got a ceiling um I, I i like i like all of these guys today and and i think if you want to go play jaw as a really low owned option i think that's completely fine you have a team with no rim protection which jobs jaw tends to thrive against um but my favorites are jackson followed by adams and bain uh or bain and adams it's pretty close between those two for me but i i, I like those guys quite a bit and uh um, memphis plays really fast washington actually has been playing pretty slow this year on, on the washington side I'm having trouble getting to anything. I think Bradley Beal is fine. I think that Montres Harrell is fine. Um, I don't think we need to play KCP at 3.6. It's going to be an option for us every slate. He's probably fine. 
Um, but I would play him in addition to value instead of looking at him as good value, if that makes sense. Um, so that's where I'm at for this game. So I don't really, I'm not really getting any of the spend ups on this on either side of this. I just find they're better options than Beal and Morant. Um, um, with respect to the values, um, the, the, not the problem with Stephen Adams. Stephen Adams is is rating to be a pretty good play, but there's like a just a kind of a glut of kind of cheap centers um, that that all look like decent plays. Uh, some may be better than others, but the center position, as usual, you know what I mean, is is, is has some has some options there, but I definitely think Adams is certainly one of them. I do like Jaron Jackson is kind of a, you know, not a, not a smash play, but, a, but, but a good value, at least at first, first look. And then, I mean, just because he rates to be the top guy for me, the KCP looks to be like the best Washington value, but I, I always, like you said, I always have kind of, tr- kind of trouble playing him. Um, so, uh, that's pretty much it. I, 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 again, I'm probably going to be off of this game for the most part. Yeah. It's, a, it's just the price. Uh, I, I do think that, I, I mean, I, I think at least one of those guys from Memphis gets there, but it's hard to, it's hard to find anything on Washington. So I kind of, kind of hear you there. All right. Uh, let's talk about, you want to talk about the Spurs and, and Orlando? I actually do. So I, I, can't, I, I made a note of something to talk about. So you mentioned yesterday we went through. I don't know whether you did prize picks or, or a monkey knife fight, but you were saying that that it's, it's it's probably a good idea to 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 do that because it'll give you kind of insight to some of the DFS decisions that you have to make. And you know, I've been actually playing prize picks like most days. Um, I I just kind of have a lot of fun being able to do cross sports like like all the stu- all the fringe sports I play. You could like match like four freaking sports in like one thing. You know what I mean? So I just kind of like playing them. So. I happen to have been been um, on uh, looking at other sports. I'm like, you know, maybe just for fun, I'll pair it with an NBA thing. So I was looking at the NBA props for today, and and the, the it was weird. The one that stood out for me when I first looked, and I was really tired, was I saw, and this was last night. Okay, I saw that Doug McDermott had an over under at 12 and a half real life points. And I didn't know anything, right? Now it's 11 and a half, but it was 12 and a half at the time. I'm like, Doug McDermott, how the hell is he scoring freaking 12 points? I'll try that. So, so I actually fired it up and then I just either fell asleep or forgot, you know what I mean? So I didn't put it in, but I was thinking about why would, why would Doug McDermott, you know, have a 12 and a half point thing or, okay. So we fast forward to today where um, we're starting to look at, at some of this and, and, you know, we all play, not we all, but a lot of us play Drew Eubanks and, and some Thad or whatever it is in San Antonio. And it turns out they actually let Doug McDermott close in that game, um, which, which is something that I wasn't expecting. But, you know, it's something that, you, you know, you should always expect Pop to do. You know what I mean? Like uh, the unexpected. Remember, they went to a kind of small lineup towards the end. And, I, and to me, I guess that gave me a reason why maybe McDermott would have that kind of that kind of prop. So, so the only reason I bring it up is because when I, when I go to analyze it a slate like today, I'm like, okay, what's different maybe about today's game than that last game. And I do think that, that in, in San Antonio's last game, they weren't, didn't really have the need to, to, you know, to play a center, you know what I mean? Um, which is one of the reasons why we were kind of hesitant on Eubanks in the first place. But I think against Orlando with both Carter and maybe Bamba, maybe, um, maybe the, that's why I think maybe the McDermott play under might be a good play because maybe he won't close today because maybe they can't afford to go to the small line. Well, I don't know if all that is sound logic, but it, 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 it indicates to me that I should be spending some more time at least getting an idea of what these props are, you know what I mean, on, on, on the prop sites to give, you know, to, it gives you a sense for where rotations are. Now, with that said, um, Eubanks, to me, at least for now, rates to be a good play among the Stephen Adams types plays at that, at, you know, at that position. Um, and I'm not really getting to too much else in this game. It's interesting because I actually think that um, McDermott, I, I don't, I don't necessarily agree that McDermott had anything to do. Like they didn't need Eubanks in that game anyway. They played Rad Thad um, okay. quite a bit or 22 minutes as, as well. I don't see it as, as a necessarily McDermott playing over him. Like it's, it's just as much Lonnie Walker playing over him. You know what I mean? Okay. So, I mean, Keldon Johnson is a big dude. So he's the, he's the other guy you can use as a big guy, even though he's not actually like, that's not what we think. Oh, of him okay. right. So I, I think that that's, and I think, I'm sure Keldon Johnson was closing obviously in the last game. Um, okay. I'd be really surprised if he wasn't, but it's possible. 
Um, but you're right, the pop will do different things. Uh, I'm a little surprised by the, the initial love for Derek White here. And I'm okay with it. Like, I'm okay with White, but he doesn't strike me as a guy I need to play. Um, he is reasonable. It's a good matchup. You know, I don't really know what to say. I, I, I see, you know, maybe it's a little early, but like projected ownerships in the 30s on him. And really I'm kind of confused by that a little bit. I don't, I don't think it'll end up there. I just think it's weird even for an initial run. Um, I like Eubanks. Um, I actually, everything you said was sound in terms of this particular matchup. They're going to need some size uh, with Carter and Bamba on the other side. And I think that, that, you know, just to compete on the boards, if nothing else, so I actually like Eubanks today, and I I'm I'll take the over on the twenty minutes for him playing today. Um, yeah. I also think that Rad that Thad Young is in play somewhat on Fanduel at forty six hundred, uh, especially against the sloppy to Orlando team. There's a lot of steel block upside. Uh, the guy who I really am interested though here is Devin Vassell. Ooh. Like there's a there's this guy is really you know he's he's playing better and better. He's coming into his own. Uh, you're going to have streaky nights from the guy. He's, he's a talented young guy. I mean, this is a first round pick last year. And I think that, you know, he's, he might be the way the, the value guy that we can get off the board with, like, you know, you, you just look at it right now. He's 3,900. You have all these other guys rating really well. Chocolate. Yes. Has chalk. I mean, Vassal's put up 30 and 28 in his last two games. Um, he's, you know, when he, when he plays well, he gets up to the, those 30 plus minutes when he doesn't play well, he tends to be around the 24 minute range, still giving you a chance at 3,900. So I'm kind of into this vassal for value where you have other guys on the other side, like Terrence Ross, who might get a little bit of love or something. I think I would rather play vassal. Um, and I, and I, and I like Eubanks as well, uh, again, for value. I also think Keldon Johnson is in play. I think that this is a really bad, these are really bad defensive teams, especially Orlando. And I think Keldon Johnson is going to have one of these monster double doubles soon. Um, he hasn't been, you know, hasn't been shooting the ball well, hasn't, I mean, really been shooting the ball poorly uh, since the beginning of the season. He was, you know, he's where he started off hot, but I, I just want to do something with this game. And I can't figure out, do I want Johnson and Vassal? Cause I, I, on the other side, the only one who really stands out to me other than maybe taking a shot with Terrence Ross, but I, again, I kind of prefer Vassal would be Wendell Carter and potentially Mo Bamba. But for some reason, I feel like I'm supposed to do more in this game. So I kind of want to revisit this one a little bit later. Cause I, I don't feel decided any which way yet. I'm just sort of, interested in a lot of different pieces of it well for what it's worth uh at this point of day probably not much uh my top value on the orlando side is fifty one hundred dollar jalen suggs and he doesn't really rate to be that great either, so he does um want to move on yeah let's do it uh let's talk about your knicks in uh, milwaukee yeah so um you know I, I think Giannis is the best play on the slate um i think he always is um oh, i shouldn't say that but 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 uh i think Giannis is the best play on this slate um you get drew back today yeah they get Drew back today it's good yeah uh um and on the nick side uh randall i, I like randall uh I, I don't i don't think you'd have to be particularly fancy about it uh i think you could play them both um but i definitely think that Giannis would be the first guy i would try to get into at least my cash game lineups and you no, know, certainly with, 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 with most of the, uh, of, of, with most studs kind of struggling, um, Giannis has been getting there, but then again, the Curry has too. So, so both, both the studs on the slate have been getting there, but, but I, I do prefer uh, Giannis to Curry if I had to choose. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, I definitely think Giannis is still the best play. Um, don't feel quite as good, like much like he's a must play with Drew back and it being the Knicks that he's up against. But you, like if he's not like 40 percent owned, I will be just way, way over the field and probably. Um, and I like Randall. I'm a little concerned this year. Uh, the assist numbers, it, we started at started the year pretty hot with them. And then it sort of has waned away, which is what gave him like sort of that real ceiling upside. The rebounding still been good. Um, he's still getting up a decent amount of shots, but not like he was last year. And he's not at the free throw line as consistently. Uh, he'll have some games where he's had some, you know, it's, it's just a little bit, a little bit to worry about maybe why, you know, when you're talking about paying nine, six for someone. So I don't know if I'm quite as high on Randall. I think Randall and jaw would be a very similar play for me today. Yeah. And they're similar at, at that price point. Uh, you want to talk about Cleveland and Toronto? Not really, but yeah. Um, 
Oh, really? Just just fly uh, out of the show, huh? Oh, you like you like some stuff there? I I, I like um, I mean, you could take another, you know, Jared Allen's offering you another chance um to play him. I mean, you were all over that in 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 right up until the time you actually had to put your lineups in the other day. <laughs> what is the matter with me? Man? That's like a problem. Oh, uh, and he and he and he did a, he did a great job. Um, aside from that, I mean, I, I don't, I really don't have much, uh, in this game. Uh, uh what do you got? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I, I like Jared Allen, first of all, um, oh, there you go. Okay. but I also like, I'm really annoyed at myself for plays like that because I was very high on that play and I just did came off of it. I mean, but Jared Allen's really going to be unowned coming off of 55 and 56 and you're down because, in of, because of the, because of the position, I think. Okay. Um, Maybe not. What's so great about the position? Actually? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you got Eubanks, but nobody's playing. I don't think Eubanks is even that popular today. Um, I, I, I don't. I, I'm into this. <laughs> I, I can definitely get behind Jared Allen. I'm open to Colin Sexton. Uh, it feels wrong. Something just with the way that he's producing this. It's just too scoring reliant, and he's not scoring enough. I like Garland a lot. Like I just, I, I feel like there is stuff to do here. And then Rubio takes away the assist upside for some of these guys. And I don't know why Rubio is projecting so through the roof right now. I, I can't imagine him ever projecting through the roof, right? He is though. I know. Um, but he, but he, I mean, he's got like, if, if I, I think they're accounting for Markinen being out and trying to, you know, say that they're going to play he Sexton and, and, and they will do that some. Um, but we see that, you know, Dean Wade got 24 minutes the other night. Uh, look, it's gross. The, the, the Wade play doesn't feel good ever. But he is 3,300. It's just a guy to consider to throw into your lump value lumps. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much probably just going to play Jared Allen, I guess, on that side. And then on the Toronto side, um, I'm going to just keep riding in a newbie, uh, especially on FanDuel where he's 7,700. Just the steel block upside is just much greater. Um, I mean, it's worth much more. So I, I kind of like the Ananubi over there. I don't know that I need to do anything on DraftKings, but this does feel like a matchup that Precious could actually have a decent game, even though Jared Allen has got you know some skills. He's bled, bled fantasy points to centers for a few years, uh, going back to when he was in Brooklyn. So I, I kind of uh, I kind of like Precious a little bit, uh, but, but OG would be my favorite along with Jared Allen from that game. On uh, FanDuel, you get a $1,000 discount on Evan Mobley and power forward eligibility. I do like that. Yeah, he might, he'll probably be popular over there, but um, but at 6,200, he's definitely definitely looks like a good play over there. Yeah, I like it. All right, uh, Clippers and Minnesota. We just saw this matchup the other day. Sheets, uh, another one that I didn't pull th follow through on. You you would have. I mean, I really, I, I just should, I, I, this is what I was just thinking. Like, why do I even do this? Like, what am I doing? And it's not that Patrick Beverly. Uh, you know, went out there shooting the ball like crazy, but he put up 36 and a half fantasy points. And I literally was the last man out of my lineup. Um, I just, I don't know why I chickened out. And he, you know, here he is again. Like we, you know, it was, let's, I, I guess I'm going to, I'm going to have some interest in Patrick Beverly. I know that Beasley was, you know, a little disappointing for all of us last time. I'm willing to completely go back there. Um, those are the guys I have the most interest in. The Jaden McDaniels thing feels a little bit thin, but there's always, you know, a guy's 3,200 and starting, you know, I don't know. Um, and then I, again, I like, I like Edwards again, and I like Towns. Um, I think that I would give a little bit of the edge to, to Edwards. That's eh, close. Uh, but I, but I, but I like this, I like this game a lot. And um, I like Zubac a ton on the other side. Uh, they're going to have to match up with Cat. He didn't like, go crazy but he did play 34 minutes the other night he put up 24 fantasy points and he's 4k he's the he's going to be the more popular one tonight by a long shot over between he and uh and uh you could even play both of them but he and why well, can't I think of the Spurs center uh Eubanks um and look Reggie Jackson I was very proud of that Reggie Jackson at half percent the other night um man that was it, it had me feeling like I was going to go places I didn't quite get I mean I made money but didn't quite get all the way there but Reggie Jackson, I think, is still in play. The problem is I think people will chase that. And he's so streaky that if he gets popular, I just can come right off of it. But I do like, uh, I do like him a little enough, you know what I mean? And uh, Paul George, I think, is a, is a really solid play at 10-4. I know that sounds weird to say out loud, but uh, if you get the 40-minute Paul George, I think he could easily be 60-plus today. But 
So I, I like all these guys. Zubac is my priority. Uh, Beverly and Beasley with one of Towns or Edwards would be my priority. And then I'm considering about Jackson and, and George on the run back. But this is probably one of my favorite games. And I do like the over for what it's worth. Um, six and a half hours before lock, uh, my top two overall values are uh, both in this game. And you mentioned them already. That would be Zubac and Beverly. Um, there, I also have them both projected at 25% ownership right now. Um, but we'll just kind of see. Um, so right now that's, that's, that's what I have. Um, I still have Malik Beasley projecting as a good play, but not as good as those other two. And yeah, I mean, if you want to stack this game, I mean, I would, I would, I would certainly play the I guess, seemingly overpriced Paul George, but whatever. I mean, I would play him. Um, and then, uh, Minnesota, you want to go back to cat. You could do that. It takes up a center spot. Um, but, uh, you could play, play Edwards if you want. Um, but I, but Zubac and Beverly right now look to be the, the top values for me. I do think the center is stronger than I thought with the Zubac. And then we got a guy in the next, I think that they're in, and even cat I like, and you know, there's just, I think that is a little stronger than I, maybe I gave it credit for at first. Um, all right, you want to talk about, let's talk about uh, New Orleans and, and Golden State here. I, I think that this falls under a be careful New Orleans, you could get blown out of the building game um, if Golden State gets hot. That's, they, they, Golden State is funny because I've been watching them this year and, and what's, what makes them, why I think they're so good and have a really good chance this year is because they're, they're they don't look great. Like, Steph, to be honest, Steph Curry has not been great this season for by his standards. He's been great by anybody else's standards, but the, this is a team, though, that I, I really – if Brandon Ingram doesn't play, I feel like they could get just completely smashed here. Um, I don't know what to do with the Ingram injury. Hopefully we know before lock. That's a really big decision point. Um, he's been announced out after lock, back-to-back -back slates. I will be happy to take my Josh Hart shots. I know that it didn't work out last time, but it worked out really well the night before. So at 5,100, I am interested in Josh Hart if there's no Ingram, and I'm interested in Jonas Valanciunas. And on the other side, I don't know who they expect to guard Steph Curry. So I am, I'm, it's expensive um, coming off of an, another dud, um, which has been sort of the, the, the theme of his season. He hasn't really had, other than that 168, you know, game against the Clippers where he was just unbelievable. He had 25 real points in the first quarter. He hasn't really had that game. So maybe 11, 11, four is not the right thing to do with him. I prefer Giannis. Um, if you can get them both in, of course, it's interesting. But I don't think that – I think they're playing good team basketball out there. And um, I don't know. So I think Draymond is a logical run back as well. Uh, I will have some pieces of that. But I, I don't feel like I'm in love with anything on the Golden State side. How about you? Yeah, you know, I just wanted to let everybody know. I don't know if you touched on this, but, um, but the, uh, the Utah Jazz – have you know have a reputation and they you know they're partially backed up because they have Rudy Gobert and all this stuff uh, as a really good defensive team and they actually are ranked third in defensive defensive efficiency this year in Utah Jazz and obviously Miami Heat is like a basically a defensive juggernaut like they're basically the best defensive team they shut down Yazzie whatever and they're number two the number one defensive efficiency team is the Golden State Warriors yep and you know if you ask the your average you know basketball fan you know, you gave them 15 guesses, they wouldn't come up with Golden State, okay? Um, you know, good for them, good for Steve, you know, good good for all that. Um, um, I'm just glad I don't have to lock in Jonas Valanciunas every day. <laughs> I don't think I have to do that. Um, um, I don't think I'm going to get to to Curry today. I just don't think I'm going to. For And if I if I had any doubts, I think your, your comment makes sense. I mean, I think this game could be could be kind of a shit show. Um, and got, if Ingram gets ruled out again, then uh, then it's very likely to be a shit show. Um, and uh, I, uh, I mean, not that the Milwaukee can't blow the Knicks out too, but dude, did you see what happened the other day? So, so people people that either played Giannis or faded Giannis. Uh, Giannis had like you know maybe like 45, 46 fantasy points, and the game was over. It was like a thirty point game in the fourth quarter. They just ran him out there. And he like ran up another 15 fantasy points in like three or four minutes, literally for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> Before they got him out of there. Well, yeah, I mean, he only played 28 minutes. I, I know, I know, but he, he didn't have to play any. You know, they, yeah. But, but, but they, they tend to, God tends to like to get them there like right around. Stretch him out like a pitcher. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. 
I get it. It's um, yeah, so so I'm I'm not uh, I don't have too much in this game, honestly. I I, I you know you got to watch the news, and if, if Ingram's out, you got to rerun the projections, all this stuff. But right now, I don't really have much. I have, I have Curry looks like a decent play, but I just don't think I'm going to play. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, also Jordan Poole did make a, a 500 threes the other night. I thought it was, it was incredible, actually. He did. Um, I had him actually on Fanduel. <laughs> did you really? Oh That's wow. It. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's just another guy for me tonight at the moment, but if, if something opens up on this new Orleans side with Ingram being out and Herb Jones is still questionable too, that's a lot of minutes. <laughs> um, you could see, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I have to look, I, if, if those guys are out, uh, I want to look back at the rotations and see who to eight up all the minutes. I think they spread them around a little bit, but I, I know Josh Hart would be really interesting to me. Um, all right. Uh, Charlotte in Sacramento, this is the highest total on the slate. I think it's a really interesting game. I think both of these – well, okay, I think Sacramento is a little bit better defensively than they're getting credit for. They've had some some tough teams that they've had to play so far, some, some good offensive teams, sort of like the Warriors haven't played. Part of the reason they're number one in defense is, is legit, and part of it is they've played weaker opponents, um, including the Lakers who are still trying to figure out who, they are, who the hell they are. <laughs> um, Charlotte's side of it. Uh, Plumlee it seems like a very logical play to me, but I – then I, you know, I go through it. I'm like, but he's just like never, ever getting there. And you could make an excuse for every reason, but in an up and down game, he's a guy I like to play, but I, I don't know. I don't feel as good about it. I, I feel stuck here a little bit. Sheets because I want to go back to Terry Rozier after just being, having a, just a dreadful night in every which way, but his price on DraftKings it makes it impossible. Basically. I do think he's a good play on FanDuel at 5,500, even though he did it the other night. Um, and we could always play LaMelo at, at low ownership because of where he's priced and he's always going to have a ceiling. I probably will be reserving most of my LaMelo stuff in general for FanDuel just because of the, he gets the steals and the blocks. And that's it's just such a huge difference when you have a guy like that out there. But right now, I mean, it's it, it's funny because I like, I like this game, but it's sort of hard to know where to go with it. Um, even Cody Martin is showing up as a potential value play. Gordon Hayward, I think, is reasonable in this matchup. But I want I want to play this game. I just can't figure out who the hell I want to play. And then you have, you know, Sacramento on the other side, which has Davion Mitchell, who I like quite a bit, but it feels like he's being over projected every day these days. Um, I like, uh, you know, I, I actually think Harkless is in play, which is feels really weird to say, but it's an up paced game. And he, you know, is playing 30 minutes and he's 3100. So he's on my list of guys. Um, I think Rashawn Holmes may be the best of all the guys that I've mentioned so far, and it feels like a good matchup for one of the guards, but I just can't, it's a pick and choose which one if Buddy Heald gets hot. Maybe that's what I would do is, talk, is think about a little Buddy Heald because I think he could get hot and shoot himself into a big game. But it's tough here, man. I don't feel so so uh, so great about a lot of spots early in the day. I guess we'll probably get news in the next uh, couple hours that'll, you know, that'll probably clear up the slate a little bit, but right now, it's not like I have a huge priority and this game is the game I wanted to target when I first thought about it. But then I look at the prices and all the players and I, I just don't know who I really want. Who, who do you like in this game? Yeah, I feel as though the Charlotte, uh, and this is the case with Charlotte, it seems when they're healthy, I think Charlotte's all very, very fairly priced. You know, I, I don't, I don't feel as though anybody from there just kind of stands out as an individual play. Um, so I'm, pro I'm probably going to be off of them. Uh, what, what's, what stinks about it is that there's some of these Sacramento guys, like you mentioned, um, look really, look really good. And and what, one of the guys I want to talk to you about was was Mo, was Mo Harkless because he's showing up for me as a good value too. And I was wondering, like, all of a sudden, this this is happening because you, if I'm not mistaken, um, you 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 hit you hit big once on on Maurice Harkless, right. maybe a couple of times. Right, so. Um, so I, whenever I see Maurice Maurice Harkless in in, in the projection, I'm like, whoa, we got we got we got to, we got to remember that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do have Davion Mitchell and Maurice Harkless right now as kind of a you know pretty some pretty decent values here and Rashad Holmes who you had mentioned also um but I just don't know what to do with the Charlotte side like you said I mean these guys are all going to be low because I mean you know uh, Lamelo at 8900 that's that's tough man that's tough for an, on a team that's got that's got bodies you know right um right. bodies they have freaking like like they have really good bodies on the team right you know right. and they give the bodies that are, aren't afraid to do anything like you have Rozier and, and Hayward and and, and um and 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 uh, Rozier Hayward and the other guy, whatever, and 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 Lamelo oh, and Miles Bridges, whatever. Um, you know, you got guys that can play. Um, so I don't think I can get to any one of them. Um, if you want to stack them, you certainly certainly going to get no percent ownership. I think. 
Um, shouldn't we be playing bridges now that I look at it? Like that feels like the best thing to do in this game. I, I, Bill Simmons, it was, it was a good reference to bridges. They called him, what did he say? He said, uh, he called him Amari Stoudemire 2.0. Um, but he's a, I mean, he, he doesn't, he's not just a dunker, an athlete. He's not just a three point shooter. He does everything. He's a creator. Um, he, he's going to get, what's he, 7K? He's 8,200. But he's put up, I mean, he's averaging like 44. <laughs> like, that's okay for 8,200. You know what I mean? Um, and this is like, it's, it's, it's a really good matchup. Um, he put up 56 in the last game against Golden State. He put up, you know, 45 shooting four of 18 the game before that. I don't know, man. I, I think that maybe I, I said that this is real with Bridges when he was got to be like 7,200 early in the season. It's like, this is the real thing. This is the player transforming. 82 feels like a lot though, doesn't it? I would just have to, I mean, I know it's, I would just have to say that, that they're on Fox 8,400 is better than Bridges 8,200. I just have to. All the evidence to the contrary, but I, I know, I know, I don't see it. I think De'Aaron Fox is like De'Aaron Fox has has put up one game of forty fantasy points this season. Yeah, I know. I don't think that how many. I think that what's his name has gone under once. <laughs> you know, I don't think, and I don't think these are like this. There's nothing, nothing about what what uh, Miles Bridges is doing feels fluky to me at all. It feels completely real. Um, I know it may sound crazy to everyone. This may sound blasphemous. He's the best player on that team. <laughs> okay people might want to argue for lamello or or uh Gordon. Yeah. I, I, miles bridges is the best player on that team and i, I don't think it's i think that it, lamello will be right there but i right now it's miles bridges for me um i think i'm into the bridges idea uh, i do feel like, like lamello a little bit too but um I, I think mitchell and harkless on the other side is fine it just feels like weird like we should be playing they have all these guards okay with heel halliburton and fox and we're talking about playing the another guard you know what I mean? It just like, feels weird. Anyway, that's my thought. It's, it's a sort of a, like, just a strange, I'm trying to understand how these minutes are going to work in Sacramento. Cause it just feels like a lot of guards playing a lot of minutes. Indiana, Sacramento, uh, P Portland. Yeah. I'm out. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like anything here. Um, talk me into something. Karis Levert. Oh, what do we got finally, for him? Oh, finally okay. got his 32 minutes. Oh, okay. He's gonna he's gonna pop and I don't he, even have him yet. Okay. All right. Yeah, he, okay. He's uh he's, I do. Okay. he's gonna be popular. Um I, I really like Levert for what it's worth. On DraftKings, 6800. I mean, if he plays 32 minutes, he's you know oh, that, yeah, sure. But I mean he played 32 in the last game, so or 31. Um he shoots the ball a ton. I mean in 20 he put up 19 shots in 23 minutes the other night. He put up, you know, 10 and 15 minutes his first game. Like he's, he's just a guy who's going to chuck. And he also will create, he's sort of a secondary point guard ish, you know, uh, terrible defense that they're going up against. It's a little, a little, the team is a little more filled out now. Um, also he's taking away minutes from the monster Tory Craig and, and his, uh, he didn't end up with a, the game that he looked like, but he had 26 fantasy points in like literally like, I think it was like six minutes the other night. And that was coming off of a few days after a 48 fantasy point game. But, um, but I, I do like Levert for in all seriousness. And I think you can make a good argument for this being a good matchup for miles Turner because of the fact that well, Nurkic is in the game, he's not going to want to step out. So you're going to get open looks from three. And that's, that's what you're asking for with miles Turner. You, you want him to get that double digit rebound. Hopefully you want him to block a few shots and then you want him to make, you know, more than half of his threes. He made seven threes the other night, put up 57 fantasy points. He put, I mean, he's coming off some big games, 38, 38, 41, and he's totally reasonably priced at 6K. So I do like Miles Turner a little bit as well. And on the Portland side, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say with Lillard. I keep waiting for the good Lillard to show up and we just aren't seeing it. I will say I'm going to continue to ride him on Fandle, even with these sort of lousy -ish performances in real is he life. Under 8K, is he under 8K yet? No, he's 8,500. He's, he's not putting up terrible games. I mean, he's putting up like 47, 40, right. you know, 46. Nice numbers. Um, but, yeah, I think he's my favorite play on, over on the uh, Portland side. Uh, I'm sorry, my favorite play on the Portland side would be uh, Norman Powell. And I think one of these days you're going to get a big Larry Nance Jr. game, but they just won't quite commit to the minutes. So probably a little too soon on that. I, I think there's an argument to be made for Nurkic as well. Um He's had some some rough goes of it again in some, in some weird spots, but he's also got a ceiling for a guy who's 7,200, 7,300. 
there's been some foul trouble in some games and more importantly than the foul trouble, actually what they they've had, they've played so many blowouts that it's really hard to get a, a median for him. And this game, you know, you're, you should assume this game should stay fairly close. I'm a little surprised to see Portland favored by over anybody by four and a half points, even at home. But yeah, I think Norman Powell followed by Nurkic and then Lillard. I may, I may end up getting onto some Lillard though, because we're going to have a little bit of money to spend. I figured I would throw this in also. I mean, I got, I got a shout it out to them. You know, so, so um, you know, part of my prize picks I talked about the other day, I was, I was watching, I think it was the, one of the awesome podcasts and they do a lot, they do some good work on the prize pick stuff. And they're all over uh, the, the Sabonis under five and a half assists the other day. And, and just the logic, which is so make perfect sense. Like just the way Carlisle like, runs this, runs this thing is just totally different than they used to with Sabonis and Sabonis the, 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 often just doesn't run through him. And yep. his assist rate is just like so far down that until people catch up and I played him under five and a half assists the other day, I'm telling you, he had one assist, like the whole game, like he got like three, like assists in the last like minute and a half, just to make it look good. But, mm-hmm. but it is just, re- I think it's a systematic change in the way that he's being used. And um, it's a really good, and I, just, I even noticed that he's, it's now down to five from five and a half, but I would probably even take a shot at, at, at the under five, just because, I mean, even though it was four of the last game, it was really just one until like the very, very end. So yeah. um, I, I would, I would go back to that. Yeah. I I'm, I'm on board um, with, uh, with staying, well, with staying away from him. I, I agree that yeah. he can use someone differently. He's going to have some big games anyway, but, sure. and this is a good matchup. I mean, it is, it's a guy like, I don't know if I would have saw this at the beginning of the season, 9,300 against this Portland line yeah. that doesn't scare me anybody um i think he's interesting um but certainly you, you know i think we want to stay away from him more than we want to play him based on the for the same reasons you just mentioned right. all right um summing up some things so i i'm going to i mean as of right now the plan is to have cunningham 100 percent um i like karis lavert as i mentioned i like Giannis as i mentioned i like norman powell a lot as i mentioned um i like joval and jared allen i'm getting a little too many centers I like Zubach, but and I like Eubanks. I think that there's there's one thing I may consider doing is putting those particular combinations together, uh, especially Eubanks and Zubach. I think that you could get, you know, like you said, they're going to probably have to use Eubanks more tonight, and you're going to get much lower ownership on him. Um, Devin Vassell, Davian Mitchell, uh, Mo Harkless are interesting value pieces. I don't Harkless is more of a bottom, you know, further down the list for me, but I do think that I may end up if I get a little bit of a game stack going, uh, use him some. And then I think I'm going to play some Miles Bridges tonight. You know, we're going to have to do this. So, so I, I, so without without showing you, what do you think? What would be a good? And if you're if you're off by by a full one, then I'm going to consider it like worth betting. What do you think a good number is for John Moran over under assists tonight? Hmm. Just I would imagine it. somewhere around. I mean, just I just got to remember the matchup. Uh, maybe. Seven, seven. Okay, so it's it's in the ball game. But it was six and a half. All right. So if you told me seven and a half, I would have probably definitely gone over. So if it's one, if it's just one, whatever. What do you think? I'll give you two guys. I think, I think I would bet over on that though. Probably right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about um, Sacramento? Because you, you thought about the Sacramento game. What do you think of assists? I'll give you two guys. Assists for De'Aaron Fox and um, well, let's do the same team. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, I think Fox is probably six and a half or seven. Okay. And I think that Halliburton is probably five and a half or six. Okay. Very good. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Um, okay. Um, all right. So, so no real big standouts there. Um, I do think uh, Aaron Fox is a little bit better of a bet, but I actually think he's, a, I actually don't think it's a bad bet for him. Is he six and a half? He's six. Oh, I think that's a really reasonable bet. Right. I mean, He's been over that in four of his games. This is a better matchup. Um, yeah, I, I think that I would take the over on the, the Darren Fox assists. Yeah. Which I guess um, maybe I should consider him a little bit. I don't know, man. I actually I'm think telling that, you, you, should, you, get, you will have some fun on this site, man. You, get, you, got, you got to try this a little bit. Oh, no, no, I, I will. I will. And I, 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 I talk, my friends literally talk my ear off about this stuff, and they're always asking me my opinion on it. So yeah. I still feel like I'm getting action, even though I'm not on the site very much. Um, yeah, it's it's. I, I do like the De'Aaron Fox over, but that whole team always scares me for DFS and just they just have so many. Inter- like, is it a Halliburton night? I actually think this is a great matchup for Halliburton too. By the way, um, one of those guys probably goes off healed Halliburton 
Fox. I just don't know which one it is. I mean, I've learned my lesson. Uh, LaMelo Ball, boy, they moved him down. He's now two for three points made. No, that was Lonzo. That was Lonzo the before. Oh, right, right. Sorry about that. That's right. Yeah, but it's weird because, like, LaMelo shoots more of them than – or shoots a lot of them, I should say. Um, I would take the over. Oh, my God. Dame Lillard, really, it's only three and a half. He really can't make anything anymore? I mean, that's not nothing, three and a half. Like – Yeah, I guess. You know, Steph averages what? Well, Steph is – okay, and anybody other than Steph, nobody really averages more than, like, what, five and a half a game, five a game? Right. Lillard at his best was maybe around there. I mean, this year, just to go for three-point field goes, Lillard has been over three – has been – had one game of three, one game of four, one game of five. Every other game has been two or less. Colin Sexton, one and a half. You can't sneak two in there? I mean, he could, but it's not – I don't yeah, think it's a lot. Like right? Special okay. bet, okay. you know. okay. He's not really a, I mean, he's, he, he will shoot some, but he's not like, if what, Garland, I'd imagine two and a half, right? Uh, I don't think they have one on Garland. Okay. Garland's, I would like the up, uh, over on Garland more than I would Sexton. In straight points. Wow. This is, this is very ambitious. Cole Anthony, real life points, 17 and a half. No, he's doing it every night. He's, he's on the comeback player of the year list. Um, mm-hmm. Miles Bridges is running, a, well, kind of running away with it. Um, and John Morant, but I mean, he's, yeah, he's, he's having a, a really, really good season. Um, I don't think 17 and a half is unreasonable for him. In fact, we didn't talk about him at all. All this guy does is just keep putting up these, like, you know, putting put a, in a monster monster. I mean, he's got some, his, his, when he gets going, man, he puts up 60, he doesn't stop at 50. He goes right for 60, you know, he's, right. he's a pretty awesome fantasy producer uh, this season so far. I mean, in spurts, he's a great DFS guy. Cause you're going to, you're going to get 25s out of him. You're going to get sixties out of him. Um, anyway. All right. So hopefully we summed up a little bit of what we're doing that, you know, I, I again, I'll just reiterate Levert, Giannis, uh, Norman Powell, Joe Val, Jared Allen, Davion Mitchell, Pat Beverly, Zubac, uh, Triple J, and uh, Stephen Adams, uh, as well as the Cunningham Lock, are my favorite plays so far. Um, yeah, I would add in, like I said, Zub- you said already said Zubac and um, and the other guy from that game, Beverly. Zubac, Beverly, Cade Cunningham are the three big value plays for me. And then the spend ups are Giannis. So I would start with Giannis and those three values, then kind of work. With Sounds good. All right, guys. Uh, well, good luck to everybody out there today. Let's crush it and. Uh, Let's hopefully uh, we'll be, I'll be in discord and we'll be with you at six Eastern. So good luck, everybody. I'll see you at six. Bobby, did you do the 